Joe Rance, at 13 years old, was left alone to provide for himself. Sick of living on his own, Joe left Sequim and headed for better things. He left to go to Washington University and become a rower. The training the boys had to do was mentally and physically draining. The boys rowed no matter what the weather was. Many boys quit after they realized how much work rowing for Washington was. As the season went on, many of the boys had to find jobs to pay for their college. Joe Rance found a job as a custodian at a nearby YMCA. In exchange for his work there, he had a small room where he could stay during college. The top freshman boat began getting times that were very impressive. They were breaking records and getting first in many of their races. They even beat their biggest rival, California. Once Joe's freshman season was done, he moved back into his house in Sequim, all alone again. He began to work for a man named Charlie. He cut wood that was primarily used for making roofing shingles. Once Joe's summer of working was done, he went back to the YMCA and worked as a janitor again. He was back at the boathouse for another year, but with a different coach, Al Ulbrichsen. Even though the boys were freshman champions, Ulbrichsen did not see them any better than all the other boys that were rowing. The sophomore boys were put in the same boat as they were freshman year, but they did not seem to row the same. Even though the boys were still fast, they did not have the same perfect stroke they did last year. Ulbrichsen tried to rearrange the boys in the sophomore boat, but once he replaced one of the boys, the boat would suddenly slow down. As the season went on, the boys began to get a little bit of their perfect stroke back. Late in the season, Al Ulbrichsen had a tough choice to make. He didn't know whether to have the sophomore boat of boys be varsity or the returning juniors and seniors. Ulbrichsen ended up having the sophomore boys race as varsity against the Washington's biggest rival, California. The juniors and seniors were furious, and so they told each other they were going to show Ulbrichsen that he was wrong. At that race, the freshman and JV team both took first. The sophomores were pressured to also get first to have all three teams finish in first place. The varsity team from California put up a tough fight against the Washington varsity, but the sophomores on the varsity crew knew they had to win, and they did just that. Al Ulbrichsen was happy with all of the teams, but it was clear that the JV had rowed better than the sophomores and with the biggest competition at Poughkeepsie coming up, he had to make a decision fast. Albrechtson had a time trial a few days before Poughkeepsie between the JV and varsity boys to see who would race varsity in the meet. The sophomores once again fell apart and lost. Albrechtson then announced that the junior and senior boys were moving back up to varsity and the sophomores were demoted back to JV. The sophomore boys were devastated and they lost all confidence in their rowing. The boys wanted to show Ulbrichsen that he was wrong, so they raced the best they did all year and got first in the JV race, and the varsity boys ended up losing. Joe's sophomore year ended, and Joe again went back to Sequim, but this year he worked brutal hours. He was helping building a dam, but along with him were two other boys from the Washington rowing team. In their previous year, they were Joe's rivals on the varsity team but all three of them looked past it and became good friends. The summer went by and came to an end. This next year at Washington was the year that mattered. It was the year of the 1936 Olympics. The boys showed up at the boathouse and were ready for the hardest year of rowing they were going to experience. By the time they were ready for their first big race against California, they were in the best shape they had ever been in. Albrechtson did change a few people in Joe's boat and he added Bobby Mock. The coxswain. The coxswain, who is the steerman and sets the pace of the boat. He was in the varsity boat the previous year. Against California, the boys rowed better than they ever had rowed, and they beat California by a commanding 37 seconds. Albrechtson was pleased, but he knew that this race was not the one that mattered most. A few short months later was the race at Poughkeepsie. This race was one of the ones that would show who was really fit enough to go to the Olympics. Albrechtson and Bobby Mock had changed their game plan. They decided that it was best for Washington to save their energy, but still staying at most two lengths away from the first place boat. Bobby had the boys further back than Albrechtson wanted. 
he caught the boys up and led them into victory. The boys made it to the Olympic trials and would be racing against the best rowers in the world. Bobby Mock used the same strategy he did in the race at Poughkeepsie. He held them until the last 500 meters. Once he let them go, they flew by Penn, the team that was in the lead. One of the rowers on Washington's team wrote to his parents after the race and said that during the race, it was the best feeling I ever felt in any boat. After winning the trials, they were off to the 1936 Olympics. The night before the Olympic race, one of the rowers, Don Hume, had lost 14 pounds in the last week before the race because of sickness. The boys agreed that they would not row unless Hume rowed with them. When the gun went off at the Olympic race, the boys quickly began to fall behind. Once again, Bobby was keeping the boys at a comfortable pace, but he wanted to pick up the pace, but Don Hume looked as if he passed out, but his rowing remained the same. Bobby yelled at Hume to pick up the pace, but his head remained facing the ground. The end of the race was getting closer and closer, and the USA Olympic team was in last. Bobby Mock screamed at Hume one more time, and Hume's head popped up and stared at Mock. He began to pick the pace up. The boys slowly gained the teams ahead of them. They were even with two other teams at the last few meters. Mock called for ten big rows, and the boys gave them to him. The USA team won. They were the 1936 rowing gold medalists. Thank <laughs> you.